In this video, I'm going to show you recording with the lowest possible latency in Reaper. So I have a project in front of me here, and I want to record some vocals. I have some drums, bass, organs, guitars, melodic guitars, and background vocals. Let's see what it sounds like now. And like I said, we want to record some vocals along with this. So I'm going to go to my vocal track, put it in record, and let's start recording some vocals. As we could tell, the vocal sounds late, or delayed, and the singer is complaining that she can't hear herself correctly, because the sound she hears in the headphones is much later than her actual singing performance. And this is known as latency, which is the time it takes for a signal to get in and then out of a computer. And there's always going to be some, unless you use some direct monitoring with your interface, and we can reduce that latency so that it's low enough to be usable. And that setting is up here in the audio device settings. And right over here is our buffer or block size. This is where we can control that latency. Now, if it's set too high, we're going to get too much latency or delay to sing or perform along with, which is what's happening right now. The singer's voice is coming back too late in her headphones, making it impossible to sing. Now to fix that, we could set this lower, but there is a downside to that. If we're dealing with a very large project with many CPU intensive plugins, we can get glitches or pops in the audio. But let's try reducing it and see what happens. Let's set it to 128 samples, which should be a very usable amount of latency for our singer. Let's try it. Notice the latency is better, but now we're hearing some pops, glitches, or crackles in the audio. And that's because our buffer or block size is set too low based on how much CPU processing this project needs. As I showed you, we have a bunch of tracks, and each track has effects on the track, taking up a lot of CPU processing. So typically, you try to find a balance between low latency and avoiding those glitches. But in this situation, this project is too big. If I make it low enough so my singer can sing, we're going to get these glitches which we can see in the performance meter right here. And we can hear it in the audio. But luckily, there is a solution we could use. Let's set our buffer or block size back to the higher setting to avoid glitching. Now we're going to create a reference track for our singer to sing to instead of these tracks. Let's take it out of record. Then we'll create a new track. We'll name it Stereo Reference. Then we're going to make this a folder by clicking over here. Now these tracks are all in this folder track. So if I mute it, we don't hear them. Unmute it, we do. So now we can just render this track by right clicking, go down here to render freeze tracks, and we can choose it right here to render tracks to a stereo stem track. Now, although we could do it this way, I don't prefer to, as it's going to create a new track, then we have to delete the folder. So instead, to remove that step, we can just choose to freeze this track, which is going to do the same thing. It's going to render our entire project to a stem or reference track, but put it all on the folder track. So we'll choose this. Then Reaper is going to render all those tracks with all the processing and effects, all to our new folder track or stereo reference track. 
So now that it's done, we can mute all these tracks. Just click and drag all the way down. Now these tracks are all muted and they're taking up zero CPU processing. Now we're just hearing our stereo stem track. But now we could lower the latency to any value we want because our project is using almost no CPU processing to play back just that one track. Let's try 128, which should be low enough for our singer. Let's check the performance meter and make sure we don't have any overruns in our audio or glitches or crackling. It sounds perfect. And we can see over here in the CPU for each track, they're basically using 0%. So our muted tracks aren't using any CPU processing. So then we can record our vocal without worrying about latency. Perfect. And we're done recording the vocal. Take it out of record. We can get rid of our folder and just delete it or save it and hide it. I'll just delete it. We can unmute these tracks. And because we deleted that folder, all these tracks were removed from the master parent send. So we're not going to hear them. So we should select all the tracks, hold an Alt on the PC, option on the Mac and click on the routing button. And now we'll hear them the way they were before. Now to avoid glitching, we could switch our buffer or our block size back to the higher number, 1024, to avoid any glitching or crackling, which we could check in the performance meter right here. Perfect. So now we could play back our finished vocal with the higher setting as we're not recording at this point. So the latency doesn't matter. But there is one problem with this method. If our singer wanted us to change our mix, we couldn't do it. As the reference track being just stereo, we can't readjust any of the sounds. So we'd have to re-render it or refreeze it every time our singer wanted to hear something different. So a more flexible way is creating multiple stems or reference tracks. So let's do that instead. Again, we'll create some folder tracks. I'll name this one Drums Reference, make it a folder. We'll only make it a folder for the drums. Make another track. We'll use this one as a bass folder, make it a folder, and do the same thing for every group we want to separate the organ, the guitars the melodic guitars, and background vocals. So now we could select all the folders. And now we could freeze these folder tracks. Right click, render freeze tracks, freeze tracks to stereo. Now it's doing the same thing, but it's doing it for multiple tracks or multiple reference tracks. So now we could take these tracks out of the folder Move them all up here. So the reference tracks are all together. Then we can mute all these to remove the CPU processing. Now we just have our stem tracks or reference tracks, which should sound exactly the same as our mix. And it does. So now we can record our vocals, change the latency, to be lower, and we shouldn't get any clicks or pops. As the CPU processing for all these tracks is zero. 
because they're all muted, just like before. But now we can record our vocal while still having the flexibility of adjusting our mix. Let's say our singer doesn't want to hear the guitars. We could turn them off right here. Or the organs. Or maybe she wants to hear more organ. We could adjust it right here. Maybe less drums. So we still have options and things we could change to inspire our singer without having to rebounce each time, but still working in low latency mode. And again, when we're done, we could delete or save and hide these tracks. I'm gonna delete them and just unmute these. Again, we should select them, hold on Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, to put them back in the Mr. Parent Send, and then change our buffer or block size to be the larger setting, the setting we need for the size of this project. Now we can hear back our vocal. And it sounds perfect without any glitches or pops. Now we have complete control over the entire project. Going back to our original setup. But keep in mind, we don't always have to do this. It really just depends on the size of your projects and the speed of your computer. Many times we can get low enough latency to leave the buffer setting or block size alone. So experiment with the amount of latency you could work with and whether or not creating these reference tracks or stems makes the most sense for you. So that's pretty much it. That's recording with the lowest possible latency in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Mom.